A reading from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Hark, your watchful, your watchmen lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, in many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by a Son, whom He appointed the heir of all things, through whom also He created the world. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stump of His nature, upholding the universe by His word of power. When He had made purification for sins, 
He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has obtained is more excellent than theirs. For to what angel did God ever say, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony, to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home and to his own people, and they received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, 
who were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and the Word dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. John bore witness to him and said, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son who is in the bosom of the Father has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. It's our way of doing it, to wish each and every one a happy or a Merry Christmas on this special morning. I prefer the word happy, because if I were to apply the Irish understanding of Merry, we might all be drunk. It seems even more appreciated than ever this year, as we know. And of course, better still, if it happens to coincide with a white Christmas morning. Well, I'm sorry I've got bad news for you. No such good fortune this year. But, as Americans like to say, stick around, it'll come. We can sometimes feel that the enjoyment is the principal point of everything. Naturally, we hope all will be happy at this time. But not all of us are. But in a sense, it doesn't really matter. Christmas never fails. Having a happy one is fine. Having Christmas is fundamental. So there's really no such thing as a bad Christmas. Just a simple minute of reflection will show us this truth. Just think. God was born like any other baby in baby flesh for everyone to see. In a nursery setting, so to speak, nobody would recognize him alongside all the other dependent, helpless and screaming little toddlers, all with the same grimaces, all with the same half-open eyes. Did you ever see a baby with their eyes fully open? He was at the mercy, so to speak, of his own creatures. In his circumstances, he could have been trampled upon by an ox or an ass or even both. He could even have been left at a church doorstep by a panic-stricken single mother. But he would still have been God. God really 
became man. It's a sobering thought. He just didn't reach down from the heights, making sure that his feet never touched the ground, walking on air. He lay on the straw in our midst. He got his feet wet. He got his hands dirty. And he elbowed his way through life. Just as we all do. There can be no such thing as a bad Christmas. Because in Bethlehem, God became one of ourselves. It goes even further than that. God made us part of himself. In a very true sense, we were all born with Jesus in that manger. He wasn't just a stranger, joined at the hip and pushing his way through the crowd. He wasn't a Siamese twin, stuck forever. The manger of Bethlehem in its shape and substance is a symbol of our own union with Christ. Because Jesus came as Saviour, Christmas is our birthday as well. Nativity means the birth of the whole person, body and soul. Not separate pieces held together with rubber bands and super glue. The whole package. If you haven't already realised it, our bodies let us know with frightening accuracy that every pain, every falling hair, every wrinkle heralds the inevitable end. And it is this flesh of ours, so fragile, so delicate, that makes us doubt our own worth and the value of living. The nativity drives away all the misgivings. They're gone. When God took flesh, he ennobled human nature. He made it great again. Not in the sense of a very famous American. He made us great again. He actually made us immortal. So the pains and the wrinkles and the falling hairs and the inroads of sin have all been put into perspective. What does it matter? The less than handsome looks, what does it matter? What matter the sins of the past or even death? The nativity drives away the misgivings. So, the Word became flesh in Bethlehem and flesh took life forever. There can be no such thing as a bad Christmas. I wish you a happy Christmas. Amen.